Now that you've been introduced to what it is that editors are looking for in commentaries, it's really useful to attentively read the work of others. Here's a piece I had published in the Ottawa Citizen recently. I was lucky that my subject lent itself to a strong visual. And also that the editor had room for not just one pull quote, but two. In addition, she gave the headline a subhead that was descriptive and helpful. But you can't always count on those options being available to the editor of your piece. And so let's unpack the things that I did have control over. First up, you can tell what my thesis was from the headline. I didn't write the headline, and frankly, you won't have the opportunity to write your headline either, even if it's published. You can submit a headline, but the chances are the editor is going to come up with his or her own that fits the available space. But if you've done a really good job of making your thesis and your argument clear, the editor will actually write a headline that encapsulates that thesis, as she did in this case. What strategy did I choose for my lead? I shamelessly exploited the celebrity quotient and told a story that included two A-list Hollywood stars, Hugh Jackman and Sandra Bullock. And I described specifically and contrasted their behavior at the Toronto International Film Festival a couple of years ago. Some of my evidence was anecdotal, but it was commonplace enough to have been observed by anyone who's ever eaten at a mid-scale restaurant catering to young people. I also cited my personal experience, waiting tables, and I referenced restaurant reviewers Yelp and Zagat to bolster my contention that female servers' footwear is not what patrons are paying for when they eat out. Finally, I quoted from the Ontario Human Rights Code, which, as the subhead notes, expressly forbids restaurants from requiring their female servers to wear heels, or short skirts and tight tops, as it turns out. My counterstatement anticipated the civil libertarian response. Don't like it? Don't work there. But I pointed out the injustice inherent in such a stance. As for a news hook, I didn't really have a strong or obvious one, but because I submitted the op-ed during the lead-up to Christmas, I tied it to the celebrating that people do in restaurants. Finally, because I'm an activist at heart, and my reason for writing is almost always to change attitudes and behavior, policies and practices, I devoted my last paragraph to encouraging readers to raise the issue themselves the next time they notice female waitstaff doing a demanding job hobbled by heels while their male colleagues bound by in comfortable loafers. You can learn a lot by reading other people's commentaries about the strategies that are effective at engaging and convincing. And you can steal their ideas and their approaches to adapt into your own commentaries to increase the strength and persuasiveness of the op-eds that you write. Good luck!